Hello guys and welcome back to Prompt Circle where we discuss everything AI. In today's video, I want to share with you how to build a GPT that can help with converting scanned documents or pictures into text. A few things are at play here. Uh, first and foremost, you need to know GPT has some of the most amazing capabilities uh, since Dev Day. So it can handle documents uh, as we saw before. So you can just upload the documents and just have a system that is able to just basically use whatever documents you've uploaded as a knowledge base for a chatbot, for creating other documents, or for whatever use you might need uh, that knowledge for. So I showed you in the last um, video of having a Salesforce administrator co-pilot that was providing information uh, to the Salesforce administrator based on documents and information has been trained on or it's been given access to, to say it more accurately. Um, in this particular video, we're going to be doing something that's a bit different in the way that we're using the GPT. So we're going to have the GPT use its image analyzer function to take an image that is full of text, extract that text and basically use that text in different ways. Uh, and we're gonna be showing that. And basically what we're gonna be looking at is the code interpreter function, which basically allows GPT to write code on the fly for you. And that's the way agents work. They have all these tools and they use those tools uh, to um, solve specific problems. So we're gonna look at this one. Um, so let's basically uh, see how it works. Now, by the way, the reason I decided to make this video and I came across this particular one was because recently I asked my dad to send me some documents uh, that I needed for a write-up and he sent me the documents as pictures. So I decided to create a GPT to convert them into text and then use the text in a reasonable format like a Markdown format uh, or a PDF, whatever it might be, uh, to actually you know, get the information I needed. So that made my life pretty easy uh, to do that. So I'm going to show you how you can build this. And I think the idea here is that as we look at GPTs and look at some of their capabilities, you want to start to see that um, you can build different agents that do different things within your organizations and give people access to it, or even for yourself to organize yourself. I am actually thinking about starting to build a bunch of GPTs that would be helpful for me, for my team, for my organization, as a way to kind of see how these agents can be deployed in real world scenarios. So that's exactly uh, some of the stuff I'm going to be making a lot of videos on in the coming sessions, because this really makes it so easy. The building of it is no longer as difficult as it used to be. I used to write all the Python code and you still can, I mean, in very, very specific situations, um, you still need to write some code, you still need to build something out, but it's fascinating how anyone, regardless of your coding skills, can build this. So wanted to just show as much as possible how to build stuff like that. All right, so let's go to, let's take a look at an, an example here. So I'm gonna basically um, upload this document and I'm going to say something pretty simple. Summarize the document. So basically, it's going to take this page. This is an image of a textbook that I just uh, picked up. And as you can see, the image analyzer is able to take that image and immediately extract the text uh, from it. Um, you could either you know, do a summarized task like I'm doing right now, which can be very, very useful for you. Or if you're trying to copy it into a format that makes sense, you could say something like extract um, the text uh, from the image and uh, create and create a markdown from it. So basically, markdown formats are really easy to use, makes it much easier. So for instance, if I wanted to paste it into my Notion document or paste it into any other tool that accepts Markdown, um, it will be able to kind of extract the exact text that I want. So as you can see, it's beginning to process the image and this is the function I'm talking about, the code interpreter. So what GPTs have the ability to do, and you might have seen this with some data analysis that, that is in ChatGPT itself, but what this does basically is to write the code on the fly. It's basically writing 
um, a Python function that can extract inf information from um, you know an image and then it's going to basically uh, create a markdown based on what is extracted so it's taking all of that information it's gotten from uh, the image um, is saved it as a text in the Python and then is putting the text inside a markdown okay so what other things can we do we can also basically um, say you know using this markdown produce a PDF document so again you basically go in there and it's gonna just basically take all of this information and create a PDF file now the ability to do this once again is because of this code interpreter that is going to take all of this markdown text that we have here and is simply going to um, use that to create a PDF file and then we can download that file directly from uh, GPT. So this is what it's doing in real time. It cannot be uh, overemphasized what's going on here. Having these types of capabilities are things that we you you can't if you had to hire a developer to create this application for you then it would take a few hours to write the code and deploy it and things of that nature um that would have taken you a few you know days or months or whatever to, to kind of get built but you can essentially ask the the tool to build things on the fly and that is really really remarkable and um, scary when you kind of think about it so there we go it's going ahead it's doing that it's saving this HTML file that it's downloaded as PDF and it's going to give us this PDF file which is gonna contain all of that information that we just asked for um, and it's done that within a few um, seconds so here we go we have a download PDF and we can go straight into that PDF document and you can see Basically, it's been able to replicate the same picture I took into text that is now fully digital. I don't know what else to say. Anyway, let's go into how to build uh, this particular stuff. So the way to build it is pretty easy and um, I will show you exactly how it works. So if you kind of go into your chat GPT and let's just create this one explicitly from scratch uh, by the way you need ChatGPT plus to have access to these um, so you go ahead and create your ChatGPT, and it gives you this ChatGPT builder ChatGPT builder is just another agent that is building for you as well so you just need to give it your instructions and you don't need to be you just need to be explicit about what you're looking for and I can I can start by saying I want to build an OCR conversion tool conversion tool that has the ability to extract text from images containing text and render them as markdown which can be copied or converted into other formats example PDF so and that's essentially what I need to tell it like I just need to tell it that I'm creating a simple OCR conversion tool it has the ability to extract text from images uh, containing text and then render them as Smackdown and and basically once I do that the GPT builder starts to build this and basically what it's building behind the scenes which we'll see very shortly is that it's building out the prompt I think to kind of simplify what chat GPT is and what um, th these LLMs are the prompt you write is essentially the, the application so and, and that's how simplified it's become that everyone can write an application just simply by expressing what they want uh, to do so as you can see it says great choice we're building 
a GPT that functions as an OCR, which is basically optical character recognition conversion tool. It will extract text from images and it will render them as Markdown, which can then be copied or converted into other formats like PDF. So it just really refined what I just asked it. And it says, how about we call this text transformer? Does the name work for you? Sure. It does work for me. Uh, let's do that. Okay. And you're basically having a conversation with this builder to build this stuff for you. And this is, this, this is what blows my mind, uh, in all honesty about this It's like, this was stuff that you would have to, you know, write a lot of code for and things like that. And that, that's if you, you know, a lot of, you know, take weeks or whatever to build something like this. And we're building it in minutes and we're building it very, very casually. So there you go. It's able to kind of tell me, you know, this is a really cool, um, icon or profile picture to represent your text transformer. And I like it. Um, and it says, now let's refine the role and goals of your tra uh, text transformer. What specific type of images or text formats should it focus on extracting text image from? For example, should it handle handwritten notes, printed documents, or both? Um, also, are there any specific languages or character sets it should prioritize? Okay, so now I'm just gonna say, um, yes, I would like for it to focus on all formats all image on okay let's just let's just limit it to say on jpg and png uh, formats and we would also like for for it to um prioritize English. So I'm just going to say prioritize English for now, but it could be any other language. Um, so I get, go ahead and hit enter. And now basically your, your GPT builder is now building the GPT. It's building it out. We've given it some instructions. It's refined those instructions. Now, the reason why this is really smart is that there are things that you might not be thinking about. It's already thinking about them. So we're just going to go ahead and read the exact prompts that it has actually generated based on what we told it about because that is the program the actual application that is running your gpt is that prompt so now it's actually uh, done the whole work so let's go and see exactly what it's doing right so this is what it's done it's given it a name you uh, you know kind of we have proved that name um it's giving it a description and then it's giving it instructions and these instructions are the very very important thing here it says Text Transformer is a specialized OCR tool for extracting text from JPG and PNG images, primarily in English. It handles both printed and handwritten text, ensuring accurate extraction and formatting. When faced with low quality images or unclear text, it will suggest to users to provide better images for optimal results. Text Transformer has a friendly and approachable communication style, making it user-friendly for a wide audience, and it avoids technical jargon unless necessary and focuses on clear, concise instructions. The tool also offers guidance on convert converting Markdown to PDF and other formats, ensuring data, data privacy and security in all interactions. So it's, it's done a really great job of writing the prompts that we need because sometimes you might not be able to kind of remember every single facet of your of your application so it makes some healthy suggestions and you can also continue to improve on your prompt either by adding more uh, more to, to the prompt directly or going back into the create section and adding additional specifications of things that you want it to do. The other thing that it has also created for you is are these conversation starters. So basically saying extract text from this colorful JPG, you know, it's just kind of giving you some of the things that, you know, um, you know, you should be thinking about when you're doing this. Guide me through improving image quality, uh, extract the text. Some of this conversation starters in all honesty are not uh, on point. I think this one, for instance, you know, guide me through improving image quality for OCR is, is really not relevant. So I can remove that one. Um, and also, if you want to add other functionality, you can always do that. But we want to just limit our functionality to simply processing files. So again, now we're just going to go ahead and do what we did earlier on and we're going to say get the text from this image um, into a mark 
down format. And now, again, it's going to do what it did previously. Uh, the text transformer now knows what it needs to do. Uh, sure, I'll extract the text from the image you provided. Just a moment while I process the image. So again, it's going to process the image. It's going to use its OCR tool that it's writing on the fly. Again, I cannot overemphasize what's happening right here. It's writing the Python code on the fly and is it using the Python code for you. So you don't need to know how to write a single line of code to know what's going on here, but it's doing it for you. And you can see the result uh, basically is going to look like this. So it basically extracts that result uh, from the uh, file. Uh, as you can see, extract the entire markdown. And now once it extracts the markdown, it's now uh, creating your uh, markdown uh, inside uh, inside inside here as you can see so there it, there it's going it's gonna write out the entire thing for you and once it's done with that it's also potentially going to suggest to you if you want to you know convert this into a PDF because it's part of the instructions that it has which is why when you're building for your team or you're building for uh, a number of people who are going to be using this, you are trying as much as possible to guide the usage of the GPT. And I think that's where, you know, it's going to shine. Uh, having these specialized agents that do specific things. The difference between that and having something like ChatGPT, for instance, is that with ChatGPT, uh, you can do everything, which is fine, which is great if you're good at prompting, if you're good at writing really extensive prompts and things like that. But in many scenarios, there might be, you know, folks who would prefer, you know, just to have, you know, the right jargon already written uh, in terms of the prompt to help them really solve specific problems. So it saves the time and also a good way of saving a prompt that solves a specific problem. All right, so it says some words, uh, phrases may have been transcribed uh, inaccurately. And then it says, if you need a perfect translation or if there are specific um, sections that are not clear, please provide high quality images. So this is just basically um, a, um, you know, a, a way a disclaimer you know in so many ways because obviously with anything ai you always have that disclaimer that there could be errors and things like that so now i can go ahead and just say you know uh give me the pdf version all right so we see um now it's been able to go ahead and successfully convert this so let's make sure it converted the right thing let's download it and this is a new file and here we go again did a great job basically converted our image again now once you're done building we have our text transformer um, we have it published and we can basically go ahead and uh, publish this to everyone so I can go ahead and use confirm here I'm gonna also make it available inside um, the, the description of the video so if you want to check it out um, you can also free 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 feel free to do that so now it's live it's available it's now something I can use to continue to analyze my document I am curious to see if what else you're gonna be building if you have ideas uh, someone had uh, an idea which I'm gonna be trying out next which is about connecting our um, GPT to uh, true an API to notion. So I'm going to be trying that in the next video to see exactly, you know, the possibility of doing that. And that will give us an opportunity to actually work with actions because we still haven't worked with actions. We've worked with the knowledge, we've worked with image analyzer, we've worked with the code interpreter, which is what's powering our tool. The next one is going to be how we work with actions. So I'm, I'm looking forward to um, sharing that with you. All right. Thank you. And do have a great one. And I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.